Hi, good afternoon. It's uh, Neil Russell and Philip Roach. We're here in Nordhaven, Europe, uh, just uh, on our first ever web uh, interaction here with uh, any buyers that are out there or any owners uh, or anybody interested in Nordhaven's. Just let you all know that uh, Neil and I obviously work together, but because of COVID-19, we are still self-isolating. So um, Neil's in a, one of our satellite offices and um, I'm at home, to be honest. I don't have pictures normally of Nordhavens on the walls, but uh, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> we've just set this up to, so we can, we can, uh, we can talk together. Yeah, there's a, just on the questions coming in, just to, on a similar vein of that is what changes do you make to European boats? On new boat sales, obviously the European boats will be CE um, approved, so they have to be come into category. Um, fundamentally, we're not we're not redesigning the boats, but things like uh, the electrical systems, we go to two two thirty fifty hertz um, AC power instead of one ten sixty hertz. That's the main consideration with the European boats. We tend to be using um, some, again, with electrics, things like uh, we use Victron inverters, um, which the, the American boats don't necessarily do, although they are using more of the European products um, for the US market as well. So there's, there's small subtle changes. Uh, things like uh, passerelles um, are you know you, mandatory in, in, in uh, the Mediterranean. So if a boat is gonna be based in the Med, we're fitting passerelles in factories. Um, the, fa the feel and layout, um, we've obviously with Nordhavens, you can do a lot of customization with, with them, shouldn't be saying that. Um, but to give that sort of more of a European feel, um, Neil and I have, have worked with owners and, and the factories to, to produce that. So I think there's a slightly different feel about some of the, the Nordhavens being produced. So leading on to that, obviously our, our time with Vrijpak, uh, the, the Dutch designer, um, they've done the interior for the Nordhaven 80, which uh, I if you haven't seen, please please go online, have a look at it. It's, um, it's very modern. Um, it's a sort of step away from what we normally do. Um, it's a, it's a choice. You can go for the modern look, but of course the traditional sort of Nordhaven fit out and finish, which is just immaculate, is still very, very popular. Um, so yeah, the European boat changes, it tends to be, it's, it's, it's subtle stuff, but obviously given uh, the consideration about where these boats go and, and what they're doing, um, we can we can adapt them so that they can, can suit whatever, whatever you need. But the motor sailor, um, would not have consider another motor sailor design? Um, yes, we would. In fact, um, I'll let you into a little secret. Jeff Leishman is phenomenal. I mean, we all have a huge amount of respect for Jeff and his designs and what he's done. He, the, the talent is immense. Um, but Jeff's the sort of guy, if you say to him, you ever thought about a 126? He goes, I've got a drawing for that. What about a 124? I've got a drawing for that. And uh, the motor sailor, which um, in all honesty, hasn't been a runaway success for us, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, Jeff has, has, has drawn bigger, bigger motor sailors. The issue with the motor sailor really is it, it's, it's where it fits in to um, uh, well, who's who? Who are we designing this boat for? If you're into the traditional Nordhavens, you don't really um, want sort of the the sail part of it. Um, and then, if you're a hardcore sailor, you might be sort of put off a little bit by the by the look of it. It's a bit too motorboat too. So you're you're almost between a rock and a hard place with it. But the boat, the, the motor sailor, the, the fifty six is a, an incredible boat, and uh, we were lucky enough to. Sell one on brokerage recently to uh, to uh, um, a lovely couple. I have to say that because they're listening. Um, who um, <laughs> who just basically put their they put their personality into the boat. And again, that's 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 another thing. You know, no two boats are alike. You could put three forty sevens beside each other, and they they're they're all completely different. And uh, they've recently just just made that boat their own, and it's it's just fantastic. And it, it's really kicked off our enthusiasm again that, about that particular particular model. Uh, it was built at Tarshing. Um, the molds are still there, and we can we can produce produce new boats um, as and when required. So yeah, it's still an ongoing thing. Going bigger, um, probably that will be something to contemplate in the future. 
um, our relationship with um, Daxing and also um, South Coast Marine in Xiamen, mainland China. Those are our two main build yards. Uh, we've now introduced another uh, builder in Turkey, and uh, that's quite an exciting project. They're doing the North Avenue 41. They want to produce more boats for us, um, different designs, and I can see that happening. Um, so it might be that, that the next motor sailor or next model will will be built at the, the Turkish yards. We, we, we're in, in sort of uh, long chats with 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 uh, the builders about where things are going to go and the, how we're pushing towards it. Yeah, I should see somebody's pops up there about um, there's mention of a new North Haven 51 to be built at the Turkish yard. Yeah, that that's that's looking pretty likely. Um, there, the initial drawings which Jeff produced um, have been sort of published out there, the, the renderings. Um, a very exciting project. The, the, the 51 and the 41, we're looking to make those more, more production-based boats. So you're not going to have the, the, the huge choice of, of designing um, the interiors yourself and making bespoke changes. That slows production down hugely. and ultimately ends up being being pretty costly to do the idea of uh, 41 was to build sorry Neil. You, uh, we, sorry i think it's to say it for the, the idea of the 41 is actually in a batch build so we're building uh, three to five hulls together uh, in a standard format and so it keeps the, the production down um rather than have all these changes which really um uh, does havoc with the production schedule and uh, um, really is, uh, causes uh, problems on, on, the, on the lines that were. So trying to move towards a more of a production scenario in the true sense of the word. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a change. Um, Neil and I sold a couple of the, um, the 41s and it's you're usually spending hours with customers going over details and things we've done in previous boats. And it's basically at this stage, it's do you want two cabins or one? And then the, the conversation finishes. Um, will that change as, as we go on? Possibly because we want to certainly keep the first 10 to sort of 15 hulls constant to get the production up and running to, to, to push forward on this project as quickly as we could. I think we will be able to start introducing things later on down the line with, with later hulls, but we know it's not going to be fundamental changes. We're not going to be redesigning interiors. Um, it'll be sort of fit and finish colors. I think that'll be the sort of the, the level of it, but it's a boat that comes with everything. You, you really, um, the team at PA and everybody else involved really put their hearts and souls into producing a boat that we'd want to actually own, which had everything you needed. Um, and that's exactly what we've done with this particular project. So it is a, it's a, it's a departure, but it's, it's quite a fresh approach for us. And uh, mm -hmm. so far the, the 41 is, is just, uh, the interest has been out of this world. The sales have been fantastic. Um, I don't know if any of you out there saw the, the live chat in Dana Point about the 41. Well, we ended up getting, I think it was four or five LOIs on the back of that, which just is is unheard of. And it's why this sort of online stuff, it's it's a bit distant and we prefer to be in the same room as, as well, you know, as each other. But um, it does work. We're getting we're getting the message out there in a, in a, in a pretty bespoke way. And um, I think these forums and 3D tours and everything else are going to be very much part of, of how we conduct business in the future moving forward. You know, I think, Phil, it's quite interesting the uh, the speed of uh, the forty one uh, sales. I mean, I, the, the 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 Nordhaven that we all know so well is you know is a is a serious bit of kit, and uh, the forty. We're not saying the forty one isn't, but it you know if you look at the the trawler market over the course of the last twenty years, or actually probably forty years in the states, but certainly in Europe the last twenty years. Um, it was it was you know, either a, 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 a semi plating traditional looking um, boat that we all know, the Fleming, or it was in 2004 when we came over, and Nordhaven came over, it was a Nordhaven. There was not a lot in between. Then Beneteau uh, came out with the Swift Trawler and you know, it got more people into the Explorer or ex Trawler Yacht, I, I should say. Truly, up to the market, which was great. They produce a uh, really a very, very good boat. 
uh, at, a, at a competitive price point, but it's not to the same um, engineering standards possibly as, a, as an auto oven. And I think uh, going from a, a Swift trawler, which has a turn of speed, which uh, you know a true Nord Haven doesn't, to a Nord Haven, uh, it was a big step for many. So the, the Swift trawler has done very well, but I think the 41 is starting to sort of fill a gap where people want, um, you know, really beautifully engineered um, Nord Haven type of vessel at more of a, a better price point and a, a greater market. There are, there are a larger number of purchases available to buy. A 41 than there are to buy yeah. a 76 for example so it, it's filling a, a, a niche in the market uh, that um you possibly didn't think it was there before but it, i think there certainly is a niche in that in that regard yeah absolutely and i think they you know we were we everybody everybody who is associated with nord Haven loved the small boats if the, the nord Haven 40 you know that world challenging boat you know it's 26 weeks went around the world um the 43 was designed afterwards just to give a little bit more space a bit more room but these were these were really really expensive boats to build and it, it, it got to the stage where it just wasn't it wasn't viable to keep that going this has given us a, a way into the smaller boat market and as neil said into offering more people the ability to get into a proper a proper offshore passage maker she doesn't quite have the, the same uh, long leggedness as her as sisters but then again you know there's the, the vast majority of our buyers aren't doing the uh, crossing the oceans every other day they do do it yes but it's it's most of our our boats are coastal um the people they're comfortable places to spend a lot of time on board um they do have the abilities to be very long legged but most people aren't doing that a lot of the boats were selling into the mediterranean for instance people I always remember the first 55 that we sold back in 06 and uh, the couple that bought that boat, they they were into planing boats. They said, planing boats in the Mediterranean, it's too rough, it's awful, it's not comfortable. We want something that's steady, can take the big seas. And then we don't have to spend the whole time filling up with fuel. They're always chasing fuel. And they said, well, fill up, we fill up once, maybe, maybe once a season, maybe once every two seasons. And so they've been in the Med ever since, just doing, doing coastal passaging and... Uh, the, the boat is perfect for that. So again, we we I think we people get a little bit scared by the uh, well. I'm not going to cross oceans. I can't possibly buy in Nordhaven. The ocean crossing bit is just one factor. There's far far more to it than that. So it's important to bear that in mind when you're when you're looking at looking at uh, uh, trolley yachts in general. If you want a boat that's proven itself time and again, uh, the Nordhaven is the the brand that you can sort of hang your hat on. Indeed. Um Part of the question, Phil, uh, on the 41 was the 51. Um, obviously, it's been built, hopefully, uh, by the Turkish Yard, uh, but an expected um, time frame. Um, I don't want to guess, but I'm, I want to say 2022, but uh, I think I'm, I'm right in saying that. Um, yeah, I, th I think I think again, you know, please, please don't quote us and don't say anything to, to, to Dan and Jeff and Jim. But um, I think with once the buttons pressed on this, I think they, they can move forward pretty quickly. There's been a lot of big learning curve with the 41. Uh, but on the new boat side, uh, you know, the <clears throat> uh, Nord Harbans aren't renowned for turning, you know, fast production rates uh, because of the uh, quality of build and what goes into them. So if you're thinking about a new new build, then you've got to uh, really figure out um, your time scale because you don't want to retire and then put your order in for your new build and then wait, depending on the production slots, you could end up waiting, you know, two years, three years for the boat. You lose that cruising time, which, you know, directly after retirement or, your planned uh, cruise it, it is is time you never get back, frankly. So uh, timing is, is is everything. 